Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Friday, October 28th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, today's Friday, and uh, this morning at 9 a.m., there's a prayer meeting in person here at the church and also on Zoom. This evening at six o'clock, we have a fall children's festival. It's going to be a great time. Excuse me, a great time for the kids uh, here at the church from six to eight um, with crafts and snacks and games and a Bible lesson. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful time, sort of like a mini vacation Bible school, but just a two hour thing. Uh, I, I usually would have at 6.30, our 30-ish young adults group would be meeting, but I think that they're actually running the fall children's event this evening, so that, that's going to be a great thing. Tomorrow, Saturday, uh, is Sharon McFarland's birthday. Happy birthday, Sharon. We love you so much. We're so glad that you're part of our fellowship, you and your husband and your son. We love you guys so much, and we're glad that you're part of, of our church and part of our church family, uh, not just for what you do, although you do great things uh, for the church, but also for who you guys are. We appreciate you very much. So happy birthday to you. Uh, Sunday will be at 9 a.m. our church history class, at 10 a.m. our morning service, and at 4.30 p.m. is the second rehearsal for our Christmas choir. Not too late to join in if you'd like to join the choir. Well, this week I'm uh, talking about some Ask Me Anything questions that didn't get uh, elected as the Sunday morning service topic. And this is an interesting one. Uh, how long should we be sleeping? And is sleeping too long or relaxing considered being lazy? Well, that's a really good question, right? Because we have a culture uh, sort of in our, in our Western culture, actually in our American culture specifically, um, that for a very long time has considered uh, hard work and working hard to be you know, sort of the most important uh, value and and that uh, actually values sleeping as little as possible values um, uh, may, you know, sort of nose to the grindstone 24 hours a day and and so you know there are lots of proverbs and maxims in our culture about uh, about sleeping at, at being you know for the week right I remember one one um, friend of mine said that they he wished that uh, he could get all of his sleeping done all at once in one go and all of his eating done all in one go and then uh, never have to sleep or eat again. So he could just kind of work, 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 work. And uh, I remember feeling that was a barbaric way of thinking. <laughs> well, what, what does the Bible have to say about sleep? I mean, you know, uh, I arrive at the end of a hard day. I take off my shoes. I get in my pajamas. I get into my bed and oh, it's wonderful. Uh, is that right? Is that wrong? Well, the Bible has uh, different things to say about sleep. Here's, here's one uh, from Psalm 127, verse 2. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. It's in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. God gives sleep to those he loves. And uh, if, if, you're, uh, if you're burning the midnight oil, if you're trying to sort of go, go anxiously go to bed as late as you can because you have to get stuff accomplished, um, there's a sense in which you need to trust the Lord, <laughs> right? Because uh, the Lord gives sleep to those he loves. If you feel like your, your ability to eat your bread depends primarily on, uh, on working hard uh, beyond uh, your capabilities and beyond your limits. Um, the Lord has a message for you that's go to bed, right? So there's a, there's a sense there in which, in which sleep is a gift from God uh, to those he loves. But then there's also this, Proverbs 6, verses 9 through 11. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. This is, this is an interesting passage because, again, I think it's in Proverbs 27. This appears almost verbatim again. Uh, it's so important that it's twice in the book of Proverbs, right? This idea that it's time to get up. 
but you still fold your hands and say, no, I'm going to sleep more. Uh, and uh, it's time to work. It's time to, to, to go about your day, but you are uh, uh, sleeping instead. And you know, I think what you see here is the balance uh, of wisdom, right? The balance here of, of, you know, sleep on one hand, sleep is a gift given by God to those he loves. And on the other hand, if you love it too much, if you use it too much, if you use it in inappropriate ways and at inappropriate times, it can become a danger to you. Well, we know that that's the case for lots of uh, gifts of God, right? Food, right? I struggle with the, the proper use of food. Um, if, uh, if you, food is a gift that God gives us to enable our, our bodies to be replenished, to heal ourselves, to fuel the activity that God has for us. Also, it's, it tastes good and it's, it's wonderful for celebration and for, for uniting people together as they join together over a common meal. Food is a fantastic gift from God. And yet, if you eat too much, if you, uh, if you, see food simply as a way of gratifying your own flesh. If food takes the place of uh, dealing with your emotions, um, then food, eating food becomes gluttony, right? You're misusing food. You're improperly using a gift from God. Same is true about drink, right? We talked about this in a daily devotional video earlier this year that, that alcohol, uh, using of alcohol, right? It, it's, it's a the Bible is, is, is sort of of two minds about alcohol. One, in one situation, one, one part of the Bible says that alcohol is a gift from God, that it actually lifts our spirits, that it's, it's used for uh, bringing joy, right, and, and light to your eyes. And yet, on the other hand, if you misuse a strong drink, that it becomes a mocker, it destroys your life, and it makes you violent. Right, uh, alcohol can be a gift from God, or it can be uh, a danger and, a, and deadly to you, depending on how you use it. Used properly, it's a gift. Used improperly, it's a deadly danger. Food, alcohol, uh, sex is the same thing, right? God created sex for uh, his good purposes. Sex is meant to unite a husband and a wife together in holy matrimony. Sex is meant to uh, provide for the procreation of children. Sex is a great means of uniting two people uh, in terms of their uh, body, mind, and spirit. Right? It's, it's a wonderful, uh, delightful activity uh, as well. Uh, and yet, sex misused becomes danger. Sex misused can divide people. Sex misused can be a tool for abuse, can be a tool for uh, having pow exercising power over one another. Sex can be used as a, as a tool of manipulation. Um, you know, sex properly used is a gift. Sex improperly used is a danger. Every gift of God is that same way. Food, drink, uh, sex, uh, the spiritual gifts, right? Uh, leadership gifts, all of these things, authority uh, can be used or misused. And if we use it properly, it's, it's a gift. And if we misuse it, it's a danger. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes says this, Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 4. Ecclesiastes is written by Solomon, the wisest man ever. It says, for everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. It continues with other things as well. Sleep is not one of those, but I think sleep could very well be one of those, right? There is, there is a time for sleep and there's a time to be awake. The Bible uses sleep as a metaphor in some places for spiritual deadness, right? Those who are spiritually dead are asleep uh, and need to be woken up, need to come to zeal. And yet sleep is a blessing to those whom God loves. Um, we were created to need sleep. This is one of those things that's important to recognize, that God created us not so that we would do all of our sleeping at once and all of our eating at once and then we get all that out of the way and then work forever and ever. No, God actually created us for the rhythms of life. He created us with a need for sleep. Roughly a third of our lives we need to spend asleep, a third of our day. Uh, seven, eight hours is necessary in order for human beings to function well. And when you've been working extra hard, you need extra sleep. Um, 
it is not wrong to uh, respect and abide by the limitations and the created uh, intentions of God in our lives. We need to sleep. Uh, we need to use sleep wisely. How do you know if you're having not having enough sleep? Well, if you're tired throughout the day, uh, if you if you arrive at the end of the day tired, that's the way it's supposed to be, right? But if you if you arrive at the middle of the day tired, and then you need a nap, right? You need a nap, or maybe you need to to, to reorganize your life so that you're sleeping better, sleeping more uh, overnight, so that you're able then to power through your day. Sleep is supposed to equip you for the day to come. How do you know if you're sleeping too much? Well, are you getting done the things that God has set before you to do? Is it getting in, is your extra sleep getting in the way of your relationships? Is your extra sleep getting in the way of doing the work that God's put before you? Are you unable to serve the Lord because you have to get more sleep? Uh, now there's also physiological issues that are involved there. Some people have uh, sleep disorders. Those are all things that would have to play into this. But th the point of Proverbs and Psalms and Ecclesiastes is that we need to use wisdom. We need to exercise wisdom in our use of the gifts of God, whatever those gifts might be. Remember, God grants sleep to those he loves. So use it in God's way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that in your love for us, you do grant us sleep. Help us to use the gift of sleep wisely. Lord, we love you and we trust you. Lord, we give you this weekend. We pray for our prayer meeting today at nine. May it be blessed and may the folks be a blessing. We pray for our fall children's event tonight at six o'clock. May the kids have a great time and learn about you. Bless those who are volunteering. Pray for Sharon McFarland tomorrow on her birthday. May she be blessed. May she know that she is loved by you and by your people, by your family and friends. We pray for our uh, church history class Sunday morning in the morning service at 10. May your word go forth. May we learn and grow and mature as your believers. And we pray also for our Christmas choir at 4.30. Uh, may it be a blessing as they prepare for uh, this wonderful season of Advent. Lord, we love you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. Oh, Sunday. Sunday, the Sunday service, the sermon is uh, from the Ask Me Anything series. It's the topic you chose. What does God say about abortion? And do dead babies go to heaven? A challenging topic. I'm looking forward to talking to you about it on Sunday. I love you. God be with you.